Languinus is a prominent impact crater, located near the eastern lunar limb. The feature is circular in shape, but appears oblong due to foreshortening. The inner wall of Languinus is wide and irregularly terraced, with an average width of about 20 kilometres. The outer ramparts are irregular and hilly, and there is a bright fragmented ray system spread across the mare to the west. The interior of the crater has a higher albedo than the surroundings, so the crater stands out prominently when the sun is overhead. The crater floor is covered by many boulders, and is slightly irregular in the northwest half. The central peaks rise about a kilometre above the floor, and a peak on the eastern rim ascends to an altitude of three kilometres. In the past, this crater has not been noted as a site for observing transient lunar phenomena. However, on December 30th, 1992, Aldwin Dolphus of the Observatoire de Paris observed a series of glows on the floor of this crater using the one-metre telescope. These glows changed form with time, and Professor Dolphus expressed the belief that this was likely a gaseous emission. The cracked floor of the crater may have been the source of the gas. The Flemish astronomer Michel Floron van Langren was the first person to draw a lunar map while giving names to many of the features in 1645. He even named this crater after himself. Ironically, this is the only one of his named features that has retained his original designation. Stevenus is a lunar impact crater located in the southeast part of the moon. Stevenus has a high inner wall and a central peak at the midpoint of the interior floor. The inner walls are slumped so that the sides slope down sharply more than gradually. There are several small ridges on the floor in addition to the peak. Due to its ray system, Stevenus is mapped as part of the Copernican system. It is named for Simon Steven, a 16th century Belgian mathematician and engineer. Tycho is a prominent lunar impact crater located in the southern lunar highlands. Named after the Danish astronomer Tycho Brahe, it is estimated to be 108 million years old. The surface around Tycho is replete with craters of various sizes, many overlapping still older craters. Some of the smaller craters are secondary craters formed from larger chunks of ejecta from Tycho. It is one of the moon's brightest craters with a diameter of 85 kilometers and a depth of 4,800 meters. The crater is sharply defined, unlike older craters that have been degraded by subsequent impacts. The interior has a high albedo that is prominent when the sun is overhead. The crater is surrounded by a distinctive ray system, forming long spokes that reach out as long as 1,500 kilometers. Sections of these rays can be observed even when Tycho is illuminated only by Earthlight. Due to its prominent rays, Tycho is mapped as part of the Copernican system. The ramparts beyond the rim have a lower albedo than the interior for a distance of over a hundred kilometres and are free of the ray markings that lie beyond. This darker rim may have been formed from minerals excavated during the impact. Burgess is a lunar impact crater, located in the western part of the moon, near the limb. As a result, Burgess appears strongly oval in shape due to foreshortening. The rim of Burgess is worn and eroded, with Burgess A overlying the eastern rim and Burgess D lying across the northwest. The floor is relatively flat and undistinguished by significant craterlets. Burgess A possesses its own ray system that extends for over 400 kilometres. Grimaldi is a large basin located near the western limb of the moon. The inner wall of Grimaldi has been so heavily worn and eroded by subsequent impacts that it forms a low irregular ring of hills, ridges and peaks rather than a typical crater rim. However, there are peaks remaining that reach heights of over two kilometres. The mare lava floor is the most notable feature of this crater, forming a flat, relatively smooth and featureless surface with a particularly low albedo. The dark shade of the floor contrasts with the brighter surroundings, making the crater easy to locate. The approximate diameter of the inner rim is 174 kilometres. Kepler is a lunar impact crater, 
named for the 17th century German astronomer and mathematician Johann Kepler. Kepler is most notable for the prominent ray system that covers the surrounding mare. The rays extend for well over 300 kilometres, overlapping the rays from other craters. Kepler has a small rampart of ejector surrounding the exterior of its high rim. The outer wall is not quite circular and possesses a slightly polygonal form. The interior walls of Kepler are slumped and slightly terraced, descending to an uneven floor and a minor central rise. Aristarchus, named after the Greek astronomer Aristarchus of Samos, is a most prominent lunar impact crater that lies in the northwest part of the moon's near side. It is considered the brightest of the large formations on the lunar surface, with an albedo nearly double that of most lunar features. The feature is bright enough to be visible to the naked eye, and displays unusually bright features when viewed through a large telescope. It is also readily identified when most of the lunar surface is illuminated by Earthshine. The crater is deeper than the Grand Canyon. Aristarchus is located on an elevated rocky rise on the southeastern edge of the Aristarchus Plateau. Aristarchus is bright because it is a young formation, approximately 450 million years old, and the solar wind has not yet had time to darken the excavated material by the process of space weathering. The impact occurred following the creation of the ray crater Copernicus, but before the appearance of Tycho. Due to its prominent rays, Aristarchus is mapped as part of the Copernican system. Copernicus is a lunar impact crater. It was named after the astronomer Nicolaus Copernicus. It typifies craters that formed during the Copernican period, in that it has a prominent ray system. Copernicus is visible using binoculars and is located slightly northwest of the centre of the Moon's Earth facing hemisphere. The circular rim has a discernible hexagonal form, with a terraced inner wall and a 30 km wide sloping rampart that descends nearly a kilometre to the surrounding mare. There are three distinct terraces visible, and arc-shaped landslides due to slumping of the inner wall as the crater debris subsided. The terrain along the bottom is hilly in the southern half, while the north is relatively smooth. The central peaks consist of three isolated mountainous rises, climbing as high as 1.2 kilometres above the floor. These peaks are separated from each other by valleys, and they form a rough line along an east-west axis. The crater rays spread as far as 800 kilometres across the surrounding mare, overlying rays from the craters Aristarchus and Kepler. The rays are less distinct than the long linear rays extended from Tycho, instead forming a nebulous pattern with plummy markings. In multiple locations the rays lie at glancing angles, instead of forming a true radial dispersal. An extensive pattern of smaller secondary craters can also be observed surrounding Copernicus. Plato is a lava-filled lunar impact crater. Its diameter is 101 kilometres, and it was named after the Greek philosopher Plato. The rim is irregular with two kilometre tall jagged peaks that project prominent shadows across the crater floor when the sun is at a low angle. Sections of the inner wall display signs of past slumping, most notably a large triangular slide along the western side. The rim of Plato is circular, but from the earth it appears oval due to foreshortening. The flat floor of Plato has a relatively low albedo, making it appear dark in comparison to the surrounding rugged terrain. The floor is free of significant impact craters and lacks a central peak, however there are a few small craterlets scattered across the floor. Plato has developed a reputation for transient lunar phenomena, including flashes of light, unusual colour patterns and areas of hazy visibility. These anomalies are likely a result of seeing conditions, combined with the effects of different illumination angles of the Sun. Other more noticeable features on the Moon are the Lunar Maria, or singularly called Mare. And they are the Sea of Serenity, Sea of Tranquility, Sea of Crises, Sea of Fecundity or Fertility, Sea of Nectar, Sea of Vapours, Sea of Islands, Sea of Clouds, 
sea of moisture, sea that has been known, ocean of storms, sea of showers or rain, and sea of gold. They were dubbed Maria, Latin for seas, by early astronomers who mistook them for actual seas. The Maria cover about 16% of the lunar surface, mostly on the side visible from Earth. They were thought to be formed by ancient volcanic eruptions. Well, I don't know about you, but that sounds like a load of rubbish to me. Let's have the APM perspective. The APM research perspective on the Moon's image and craters are that the Moon's image comes from close to its projecting source. The shading, scoring and electrical arcing can give the illusion of a 3D object, but a full moon reveals what it really looks like. The moon only has one face, which flips and mirrors either side of its projected location, which is why when viewing the moon in the south, you see the same image as viewing the moon in the north, but flipped and mirrored. This is an effect of electromagnetism. You are seeing the spirit of the physical model and process below. Thank you for watching.